It's the Mark and Hoogie Show, featuring this week's guest, Mike Mushak of Stained and St. Asonia. Hey, welcome. It is the Mark and Hoogie Show, and our special guest today uh, from Stained and St. Asonia, we got Mike Mushak. Uh, what's going on, Yay. man? <laughs> How you guys doing? Lovely Very. to see you. Uh, you would have you would have probably been out on on tour right now if it wasn't for all this COVID crap. That, that, yeah, we would, had a pretty big tour planned for uh, a big uh, a big stain tour plan. Yeah, we would have been back on the road with Disturbed, and actually Santa Sony would be out on the Breaking Benjamin tour. So, uh, all right. Unfortunately, uh, yeah, next year hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, so the, what are you filling up your days with now then? Because clearly, I mean, you, ha you had all these plans to be out on the road. What uh, what, are you, what are you doing now then? Filling up no, sure. Island. I Well, the good thing about it is that I have 13-year-old twins. And, you know, they uh, a lot of the stuff that they do is kind of back and running. So uh, I find myself at the barn every morning by about 7.30 for my daughter to ride horses. And then... Uh, baseball practice and games for my son so i a lot of running around with that for my wife and i and then uh i just kind of do stuff around here so you know what i mean there's uh you know the funny thing is for me it's not really different like if i was off the road this is what i'd be doing anyway so uh listen i uh, it would have been nice to have worked i mean i was definitely looking forward to you know doing that tour of disturbed and you know getting back and playing those stain songs we did some of them this fall you know and actually santa sony had another uh tour of uh, europe in october planned and that's that's also you know since been moved so um there's no more shows for this year yeah have you um I, I know that aaron kind of mentioned that there was possibly a stained album in in the works is there any truth to that uh there's some there's some music floating around you know stuff <laughs> nice. going forth and yeah so we'll see we'll see where that ends up and uh you know like i said there's there's definitely some downtime now so there's uh there's a lot of stuff to kind of you know to to sort through see uh I would almost be shocked if there's any musicians out there that aren't working on new material right now because <laughs> it's well, like everybody's sure. working on something. I, I know. I mean, I, I have a feeling that uh, 2021, there's going to be so many releases out there that nobody's going to know what to get and listen to, right? <laughs> a lot of records and hopefully a lot of tours. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I, I think that, I think that that, you know, listen, as long as, you know, people can get back out there, I, I know I'm actually part owner of a, a restaurant venue in mass. And I, I know that, you know, we moved everything to next year, our shows. And uh, I mean, mass is saying, it sounds like until there's a vaccine, they're not going to be able to, you know, to be able to do shows. So mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Let's hope that the, what they're saying is true and that that comes sooner than later. And, you know, things open up a bit. I, I think between that and uh, just, I think insurance would be a big thing too. A lot of these, you know, uh, yeah. people are, aren't going to want to insure big tours, you know, I mean, no, sure. I love touring America, but uh, you know, it can get a little shoe happy down here and down there and, you know, before you know it. Yeah, no, no, no question. So, I mean, we'll just have to wait and see. I mean, it's definitely, uh, something that I thought I would never see. You know, I, I keep saying, I, uh, we never realized how good we had it. It's true. You know, absolutely. So you're, you're in America, uh, the rest of St. Estonia, all in Canada. I think Adam and the boys all kind of live pretty close to each other. Um, no. Yeah. So it's, that's gotta be kind of weird that, you know, I know that they even did, um, there was like that virtual tour that, that, that went on, but unfortunately you weren't able to be a part of that because again, uh, it's separated. I don't even know how that would work if you were to try to chime in there. You know what I mean? No, right. But um, how, so how does, how does it work then with, with the writing process and, and even the recording process now? Is it all just kind of remote or is it? It's always kind of, 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 it's been that way anyways. I mean, even, you know, I mean, Adam, Adam moved, even when he was in the States, I mean, he, you know, moved around was in a bunch of different places and we never lived in the same, you know, same state. 
even, you know, so uh, it was really always, you know, sending ideas back and forth. And then once we felt we were at a certain point, you know, getting together and being able to kind of sort through those ideas and, you know, finally get into room and play them as a band, you know, so um, there's really, you know, those few steps that kind of lead up to ultimately getting together, and, you know, playing in a room together, which to me is really... You know, I mean, that's the way I really like to do it, you know, kind of get to, you can really feel the song, you feel where it goes. I mean, it's one thing to sit in front of a computer and, you know, it's really easy to cut and move things around and, you know, um, but until you really get together and, and play it, you know, uh, so I, I feel like that's really the best way to you know, feel how where a song's going. How did, um how did the hunted come together? Because I think Adam told us that, that was kind of you and Sully kind of got to get like Adam kind of wasn't really involved with that. Right. It was, it was, uh, you know, funny. It was when Stain really stopped touring back in, uh, God, I don't know, 2011. I want to say it was somewhere around there. Uh, after, you know, our last record came out, I, I was really kind of searching for different things to do. I went and played with Jason Newstead for a year, which was great. And I had all this music that I had written and I was really trying to figure out what to do with it. So, um, I had contacted a bunch of different singers and I was, you know, trying to do that, you know, write music, give it to different singers and have guy, different guys sing on every song, the slash type of thing. You know, like I thought he was the first one that I knew of anyways, that kind of did that. And, uh, Sully was, you know, kind of on the list of people that I wanted to do good friend, known him for a lot of years, uh, you know, super talented. And so we were on the road with God smack and I, uh, Sully and I were working on a bunch of different things and I kind of kidding that we were close to Chicago one night and I said, listen, let's go to Johnny's place. So I hopped on his bus after the show, we woke up outside of Johnny K's studio and we spent the day and uh, Johnny and I put the music together, but you know, we made, we made some arrangement changes with Sully, things that he wanted, you know, a little bit differently. And uh, we spent a really long day putting that song together. But I mean, this was years ago, you know, I mean, I want, I don't, I remember when it was 2011, 2012, somewhere around there. Wow. And so the song's been kicking. It was actually originally for supposed to be for a movie. And uh, they ended up, uh, I don't know, like the director had a friend that was a composer or something. So they didn't they ended up not using it. Hmm. It was kind of just been sitting around and we went to do this record. Uh, our manager really liked the song. Uh, and he said, hey, why don't you guys try and, you know, do The Hunted. So um, we re-recorded it. Sully re-sang and I think we changed the key. I think like the verse changed a little bit and we kind of just gave it a little bit of, uh, you know, of an update. And uh, that's what you, what you end up hearing. Nice. Yeah. Cool, man. Uh, so we're going to take a quick break. We have uh, some would you rather questions that we're going to come back with. Okay. So <laughs> that's going to be coming up in just a second. It's the Mark and Hoogie Show. It's the Mark and Hoogie Show. Adventure Mystic is Mystic Connecticut's premier paddle sports destination, featuring bike, kayak, and paddleboard rentals, sunrise, sunset, and full moon paddle events, kayak and paddleboard lessons, tours, and private parties, paddleboards, skateboards, snowboards, and so much more. Now shipping anywhere in North America. Order online at adventuremystic.com and follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Support the Mark and Hoogie Show by purchasing your very own Mark and Hoogie Show merch. Shirts, hoodies, hats, coffee mugs, and even flip-flops. You know you want to walk all over them, just like their kids do. So head over to the merch page at themarkandhoogieshow.com today. SIT Strings is celebrating 40 years. We believe that great tone starts with great strings. Manufactured in Akron, Ohio, we're a small but mighty company made up of guitar players, bass players, fathers, mothers, brothers, sisters, country music fans, metalheads, 80s rockers, and even the occasional jam band guy. Visit us online at sitstrings.com. The meanest beard products in the world. Hoogie here, and I gotta tell you, I've been utilizing the meanest beard product in the world for some time right now. It's helped my beard come in full, luscious, and, well, what more can I say? Save 15% using the meanest beard discount code MB15MH. Find us on the web at meanbeardco.com. 
Why leave the house to go shopping when you can buy from your couch? Buyfromyourcouch.com strives to give their customers unique quality products and service at the absolute best price. Choose from one of their fashionable and washable masks and keep yourself and others safe. Plus, check out their top quality shirts, bar supplies, and more. Just visit buyfromyourcouch.com. Conquer Rides and Rods, Canada's largest aftermarket V-Twin parts retailer for Harley-Davidson and Indian Motorcycle. We also carry the latest biker clothing lines and accessories. Free Canadian shipping on orders over $50. Meeting or beating all Canadian online pricing. Check out Conquer.ca. That's Conquer with a K. Instagram at Conquer Rides and Rods. Support the Mark and Hoogie Show by purchasing your very own Mark and Hoogie Show merch. Shirts, hoodies, hats, coffee mugs, and even flip-flops. You know you want to walk all over them, just like their kids do. So head over to the merch page at themarkandhoogieshow.com today. Guitar gifts for you. A personalized guitar strap. They're embroidered, affordable, and professional looking for that electric, acoustic, classical, or even bass guitar player. All guitar straps sold are genuine Levy's products. And they're all fully adjustable. GuitarGiftsForYou.com That's GuitarGifts, the number four, the letter U, dot com. Visit us online at TheMarkAndHoogieShow.com Hey, welcome back to The Mark and Hoogie Show. Uh, we got Would You Rather, uh, Mike Mushak edition. So, Mike, uh, would you rather? Pretty simple. We're going to ask you uh, a question. It has two options, and uh, you let us know what you're thinking. Oh, so, uh, I'm going to start off. Uh, would you rather eat a box of dry spaghetti or two cups of uncooked rice? It's the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> Is it, though? I don't know. I mean, I mm, dry spaghetti or uncooked rice. I mean, yes, it's just dried up pasta. Uh, I don't know. Try it. I, that's a lot of rice two cups it is a lot of rice yeah okay so it, i'll go pasta you talked me into it okay all right i thought the rice might be easier because it's smaller but you doesn't it it expands as it you know in your belly yeah. well, i guess yeah i don't need any more expansion down there <laughs> <laughs> um would you rather lose all the money that you've made this year or all the memories that you've gained <laughs> Probably money that I made this year. You know, I mean, there's, you know, yeah, I've got to keep some of those uh, quarantine memories. Yeah. Yeah. It's, okay. It's, it just means nothing. I'm not going to lose it. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So would you rather uh, hit every, uh, sorry, would you rather have all green traffic lights as you approach to them? Or would you rather uh, never stand in a line again? I'd go with the line. Yeah, especially now. Well, it, never mind now. I'm going to tell you right before this thing, we actually we actually made it to a Universal right before everything ended, and we spent one day at Disney. And I waited the longest I've ever waited in my life. It was over three hours in a line to get on the thing. And I've so if there's if there's a way to avoid lines, I would. Yeah, I considered a traffic light for a minute, but some of those lines, I mean, <laughs> oh, they're outrageous. We were yeah. there at the beginning of February, and same thing. It's like. Yeah, yeah too. that's when we were there. It was, it was packed. We were probably there the same day. <laughs> we were. I actually, I saw you. I don't, I don't want to. <laughs> yeah, totally. We all, we all do it. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh <laughs> great. Don't Hoog run the other way. Hoogie's coming over again. Yeah. He's got to drop something off. <laughs> I'm ringing, ringing my doorbell. I'm like, everybody hide. Don't, yeah, don't even look out the window. Lights off. Don't lights move. Off. Yeah. Mark, I, I brought you a beer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that kid. Yeah. Oh, hey, man. How you been? <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, would you rather always be able to tell when someone's lying or be able to lie without anyone ever knowing? Tell when someone's lying. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I agree. Uh, uh, would you rather only have a horrible, corrupt government or no government at all? Oh, geez. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like you need something, don't you? I don't know. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's no government at all. I feel like, <laughs> but, you know, I feel like it's pretty corrupt anyway. So why don't we just keep it the way it is? All righty. <laughs> Stick with the enemy, you know, right? I guess. Uh, instead of the unknown. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and would you rather have the world taken over by robots or by aliens? 
know. <laughs> Robots. Yeah. Why? Now I'm just curious why. <laughs> I have no idea. Because <laughs> all those movies with aliens, they come down, they just they kill us all. True. Yeah, like I feel like you could at least somehow probably kill a robot, you know? It yeah, you would think. Disconnect some wires and there, that'd be all right. There's a few good aliens. I mean, yeah. You know. e e e e T. E e T. E.T. was good. Cool. Yeah, he was cool. Hacking me. Yeah, Ma I was just saying, Mac and me, Mark, Mark and Mindy, Nanu, Nanu. You oh, know? okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. There you go. You can't decide what aliens are coming to to Earth though to take over. <laughs> no, right, no. right. Unfortunately. All right. Well, there you go. Would you rather the Mike Mushak edition here on the Mark and Hoogie Show? All right, we are going to come back. We're going to uh, do some viewer questions, some viewer and listener questions. We have people sending questions, and uh, you'll be able to answer. All right. It's Mike Mushak of Stained and Santa Sonia joining us on the Mark and Hoogie Show. Visit us online at themarkandhoogieshow.com. Rev Amplification is committed to innovation, tone, and service. Check out the new Alpha Series, the all-new G20 and D20, as well as our great line of pedals. The plan from the start with the G Series pedals was to recreate the tone of our amplifiers. You can pick that up in one of the three options, the G2, G3, and G4 pedals, and they're available today over at RevAmplification.com. Support the Mark and Hoogie Show by purchasing your very own Mark and Hoogie Show merch. Shirts, hoodies, hats, coffee mugs and even flip-flops. You know you want to walk all over them, just like their kids do. So head over to the merch page at themarkandhoogieshow.com today. Prestige Guitars. We manufacture both solid and semi-hollow body electric guitars, bass guitars, and acoustics using only the top components. Whether you're on stage, in the studio, or at home, Prestige Guitars will ensure that you sound, feel, and look the best each and every time you pick it up. Check out our new custom shop online at PrestigeGuitars.com. Bestronics Pro Audio, providing high-end and durable audio cables for the professional musician. All cables are custom made to order and manufactured right in the USA using premium components. Check out our custom pedal board and rack builds. Visit best-tronics.com. And don't forget to follow us on our socials. Homegrown Boone's Bourbon, founded by American singer-songwriter Tyler Boone from the Striped Pig Distillery in Charleston, South Carolina. It's 117% proof, 75% corn, 21% rye, and 4% barley. True American-made bourbon, aged in brand new American white oak charred barrels. Order a bottle online today, drinkboonesbourbon.com. Will soon be available in Edmonton, Canada, and in Europe. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Adam Gantier from St. Asonia. And you're watching the Mark and Hoogie Show. Hey, it's the Mark and Hoogie Show, and we got Mike Mushak of Stain and Saint Asonia joining us today. And it's time for you guys to ask some questions. Uh, we've had some questions that were sent in, so uh, are you ready? I, I hope you're ready, Mike. Sure. Some of these are tough ones. We got uh -oh. some good ones for you. I studied. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. Our first question for Mike Mushak. Hey, Mike. What's up? This is Kikasso. Um, What's the biggest difference between a singer like Adam and a singer like Aaron uh, in two of the bands that you're in? Big fan. What's the biggest difference? I don't know. I got to say that I actually feel very fortunate to be playing with both of those guys because I think that they are two of the best singers out there. Um, you know, I mean, that's why I really... Listen, I first heard Aaron sing back in 94. I was like where have you been? I mean, I just, I heard him, I was blown away. I just thought he had such an, an amazing voice. Um, and, you know, we did a lot of tours with Three Days Grace and I thought the same thing. I'd sit on the side of the stage and watch those guys and, you know, th saw, thought the same thing about Adam. You know what I mean? They're just two really talented, talented guys with, you know, great voices. And uh, I feel fortunate to claim with both of them. So uh, biggest difference though, I don't know. Um, I mean, they're definitely they're definitely different people. I mean, different personalities. You know what I mean. Um, what what about what about when it comes to like writing with them and stuff like that? How 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 different do the experiences? You know, what do you take away from those experiences uh, writing with Aaron compared to writing with Adam? No, sure. I mean, Aaron always, you know, 
if he likes something, he's got to put a mark on it. We have to, you know, change things. There'll be, there'll be a lot more. I feel like I do a lot more changing, like musically with that. And a lot of times with Adam, he'll he'll kind of like take what I have and just be cool with it for the most part. You know, yeah. I think that's probably the biggest difference. Um, I. But it's the same kind of thing. I mean, I just feel like my job with either of those guys is to be able to write something that they're going to be excited about and want to sing over, you know, and that doesn't necessarily mean it's something that I that is my favorite either. There's a lot of times that I've written something. I'm like, oh, my God, this is great. And like, yeah, I don't hear it. So, you know what I mean? Those are, you know, I used to get upset over that years ago, but now I'm like, OK, so that's why I feel like I just got to, you know, write a lot of things for, you know try to get everybody on board with what's going on nice yeah all right cool let's go to our second question i've got two questions from the great state of louisiana for mike mushock the first one is simply why 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 are there so many different tunings so many tunings. Couldn't you just pick one and write all the songs in one tuning? Why did you have to make up so many different tunings? You have to carry so many guitars on the road. So much maintenance. So that's my first question is just why? <laughs> my second question is I'd like to know out of all the guitar techs you ever had in your whole career. Oh boy. Which which one was the the most handsome, intelligent, articulate, <laughs> great sense of humor, fun to be around, uh, good at his job, great work ethic, um, dependable. Uh, that also happened to be from the state of Louisiana and is a big Cubs fan. Say, I'd like to know. Of all the texts you ever had, which one of them fits that? I feel like this is this is a setup. I miss you, buddy. The the tech one's easy. I mean, the best tech ever. Everybody knows is Takumi. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's true. He says. <laughs> You've had some legends work for you. I mean, yeah, no. I I figured I had to go with that. I couldn't I couldn't name you and I couldn't name Swampy. There is no way. So I got to you know what I mean. I got to you know reach outside the box well, there. Well, uh, like if for those who are tuning in, uh, Swampy was was Mike's tech for years. Uh, uh, and when he departed, he actually brought me in and uh, yeah. trained yeah. me for the gig. And I, I learned so much from that guy watching. Uh, him night after night him and uh, you guys had Grady Champion out with you at the time yeah, was, uh, yeah. I was I was so young then 25 and uh, I mean I, I I appreciate everything I've learned from those guys and in, in experience you know sure. life experience and, I that. and listen and it I as as Swampy was saying it's not an it's not an easy gig there were a lot of tunings and and the why is I, I'd want to play this and the only way that I could do it was by tuning a string a certain way. And I would just write a song based upon how I uh, wanted that play. And I wanted an open string to do it. And then next thing I know, there's, you know, 24 different tunings and I'm going. It, it, it's a, it's actually 25. I have the okay. list. Yeah. <laughs> but <If> you... <laughs> I, I, do, I do have to say I have settled in on one. I've, I've had one since, I mean, I think the last stained record kind of settled in on one and I pretty much used that one and I, I've stuck to it because I'm I hated not being able like fly dates were just like I have so many guitars and we're like how are we gonna play these songs so I gotta and you have to figure out a set based upon how you can tune a guitar to be yep. able to play it and so I uh, it made things really difficult for everybody involved. And even though when you just change it, now the intonation's not right and it can still sound out of tune. And it was like, it's a nightmare. So I, go ahead. I remember when I started with you, we didn't have vaults in and it was all trunks and, and single guitar cases. And it was literally 25 instruments yeah. pulling out of a case, putting it in every night. That was, that was a good half an hour on the load in and load out every night. I remember yeah. I had a guy fill in once and uh, <sighs> I mean, I think the second song he hit handed me a guitar to tune. And I think every guitar after that was, it was the wrong tuning. I mean, he'd literally hand me a guitar and hit mute on the tuner and I would tune it to what it needed to be. And I turned around and and there was just 
like on a road case where just guitars stacked on each other because you didn't know what to do with them or what was going on. Yeah. So, needless to say, that was his one and only gig. But uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it can be overwhelming. You know what I mean? I'm sure, especially if you don't, you know, and it's real easy to make a mistake. You know, it's not. Um, so anyways, the why is, like I said, it was just really kind of, uh, when I'd write something, I would want a certain sound or a certain chord or a certain note. And if I wanted it to be an, an open sound where I could play all the strings of a chord and that's, that's what I would do. Um, and honestly, as you said, I've been really lucky. I've had some great techs who, I mean, you know, you're always did a great job. Welcome back anytime. We'd love to have you swampy. Same thing. He was great. And, uh, both you guys have been, uh, yeah, I was real, real fortunate. Cause you know, <sighs> when you go out there and you're not worried about getting that guitar that's out of tune and you can actually just go play and not be like, Oh shit is is this going to be right and you go to hit that string that you know had to be changed and you're like nope it's not right <laughs> you know what i mean when you don't have that and you can just rely on being able to play and not think about those other things and know that you're going to hit some of those two weird open chords and it's going to sound in tune that that's you know that's uh invaluable for sure so uh, both you guys are great for that the nice thing i liked about working with you too is is you you communicated you know if there was something with a guitar even like at the end of that song, hey, check this, or hey, you know, like you right. compared to most musicians, you always communicated with your guys in in what what you wanted. Some guys just ah, this sucks. I can't take it. <laughs> okay, what what is this? What yeah. it, you know? But what? but but. <laughs> You, yeah, you no, know, I, I I've never seen you lose your cool or anything on deck with with any of the shows that you know. Watching other guys, you know, do it or you know that that's one thing I must say that uh, working with you, I, I I can take away is is you were out of all the guys, you know, hit you. Eric Bass is another one like that. Uh, you know, you're easy to communicate in in regards to what you wanted on deck. Sure, cool. All right, let's go to our next question. Hey. Matthias and Hoogie, it's Red Cup Jeff once again. I got a question for Mike Mushak. You've worked with some legendary singers like Aaron Lewis of Stained or In Stained, Jason Newstead in Newstead, eh, and Adam Goche in Saint Asonia. Those are some legendary bands. But what I want to know does pineapple really belong on pizza? Does it really? I want to know your answer, and I'm looking forward to hearing it. Please. We want to know. Till next time. Thanks again. Jeff, back again for Save. another question. My dad. <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> what do you think, Matthias? Yeah, the, the guy never gets my name right, and I'm just, I'm done. It's been a different name every week. Right, Jeff's been on every show. Jeff asks us a question for for every artist, and uh, well, this week, does That's pineapple good. belong on pizza? I mean, not in my not in my world. You know what I mean? All meat all the time. A little thing I could tell you about the whole pineapple on pizza. It was invented in my city, Chatham. Look it up on the line. Okay. On the line. On, on the, the line. line. Look yeah. it up on the line. Okay. Okay. Wow. <laughs> you're responsible for ruining pizza <laughs> <laughs> stupid canadians <laughs> yeah not yep. me not me <laughs> i i mean <laughs> honestly the first time i had it i i thought it was it's actually it's not it's not terrible it's not bad if you have that you know what is it ham and pineapple they put on it yeah right yeah it's not bad but i mean i i never i never order pineapple on it if it's there i mean look at honestly everybody says oh <laughs> Pizza, pizza suck. Like, I don't know. Not, I mean, there's definitely degrees, but no pizza's ever sucked for me. I, it's always just something <laughs> I really like, no matter pretty much whatever is on it. I miss after show pizza. Yeah. You go back to the bus and there was, I don't care, every uh, four nights out of the week, there was after show pizza kicking around. You're like, oh. and I could eat it every day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It should no, it's, it's, di it's different everywhere you go, uh, you know, across the country. Well, right. It because is. it's, it's probably just the local pizza place. Right. And every yeah. he makes pizza different. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 I like donuts. I, I would ask for donuts. Don't. <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't know. By, by the end of the tour, you'd be wearing a moo because you wouldn't fit into <laughs> anything else. <laughs> my 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 goal in life is to get diabetes and wear a moo. There you go. Wash there you go. Off with a rag That's on a stick. Guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and um, our last question is actually a two-part question. So I think you'll know this person who's asking this question as well. Uh -oh. oh, hey, Mike. What's up, buddy? It's Adam here, of course. Uh, I got a couple questions for you. First one, I would like to know, between the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Boston Bruins, I would like to know how it feels to know that the Maple Leafs will be and are the better team this year. How does that feel? That's my first question. <laughs> um, we'll check the records on that one and see where the Bruins are. Okay, because last I checked, they had the best record in hockey. So uh, we'll see where that ends up. And I think that uh, we just have to look at what happened last year, like every year when it comes to the Bruins and the Maple Leafs. Who ends up winning? Yep. Bruins, right? So Adam has this thing where, uh, you know, between the, the Blue Jays and the Red Sox and the Bruins and the Maple Leafs, you know, we have this uh, very nice uh, little rivalry that goes on. So, yeah. Nice. All right. And then uh, it was a two-part question. So here's part number two. Okay. And my uh, second question for you is, I mean, I might already know the answer to this, but... Uh, I would like to know what your favorite song from uh, Flawed Design, the new St. Asonia record, what's your favorite song on the record uh, to play? Uh, whether it's live or just sitting down with a guitar, what's your favorite riff, I guess, from Flawed Design, your favorite thing to play? Actually, you know, there's there's actually a couple. I, I like... Uh... August day riff is, is pretty cool. It's pretty heavy. And I like justify, I think is, is fun for me to, to play kind of like a mid tempo groovy kind of thing. So I like those too. Are there any songs that you're almost kind of, you, you don't want to play anymore. You're just kind of like, Oh, I got to play this song again. <laughs> Listen, that, that usually means that the song people want to hear it. So right, yeah. I don't get that way. You know what I mean? Like, I remember there was a time where Aaron was like, oh, my God, I don't want to play. It's been a while or outside ever. I'm like, really? Yeah, I don't play much. I'll ever get. I'm like, well, I mean, we kind of have to. And it gets like yeah. the best response of the evening. So I think that uh, we should. <laughs> yeah. You know, but I mean, yeah. there are people, you know, there are, you know, there are times, but I, it's never, it's never bothered me. It's not, that's never bothered me at all in fact i look forward to a lot of times those those points in the evening as well well and there's nothing worse than going to see a band that you love and then it's like they didn't play favorite songs song. i want like uh, you know play the hits. so I'm like come on the black crows were notorious for doing that right <laughs> they just would just do like 20 30 minute jam sessions jam. and like right. not play like hard to handle or... you're like listen guys i know you're great musicians i know you can jam yeah. but please can you play you know <laughs> talk to angels <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah i got you i hear you <laughs> awesome well there you go some questions answered by the one and only mike mooshock all right uh we're gonna wrap up with you in just a couple minutes here on the mark and hoogie show visit us online at the mark and hoogie show.com DeanBlundell.com is Canada's premier blog and podcast network. Our unique group of broadcasters, athletes, writers, and production specialists cover platforms that range from music, sports, radio and television, marketing, self-help, and even comedy. 11 podcasts, over 20 bloggers. Pure content madness. Check it out for yourself at DeanBlundell.com. Support the Mark and Hoogie Show by purchasing your very own Mark and Hoogie Show merch. Shirts, hoodies, hats, coffee mugs, and even flip-flops. You know you want to walk all over them, just like their kids do. So head over to the merch page at themarkandhoogieshow.com today. Hey everybody, David Ellison here. You are listening to and watching the Mark and Hoogie Show. Hey, we're back. It's the Mark and Hoogie Show with Mike Mushog of St. Asonia and Stained. Uh, get their latest album, the latest St. Asonia album, Flawed Design. It is available right now and uh you're you're a busy man mike uh you know I, I i gotta say you know what i really enjoy is the uh you do those like uh vr sessions or it's kind of like a 360 camera 
It is. Yeah. 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 That's kind of cool. We've been able to do some, some cool stuff. I think I was real happy when we were, when we were back on the road with San Antonio and touring with Seether, uh, we were able to get Sean together and Adam and Sean uh, played and Corey, you know, played and we did a couple of shows that way. And actually it was, Corey called me yesterday and we were just kind of reminiscing and I was just, we, uh, we put out a version that we had done of passenger by uh, the Deftones that we did acoustically yeah. that we did at a show. And I think we put that out. Um, there's a version that we did Aaron when we did, what did one of Aaron's uh, benefits was Sully and Aaron. And we did, uh, an acoustic version of, uh, crawling, you know, kind of a tribute to Chester. Um, yeah. there's yeah. a bunch of different stuff up there that we've done. We've done, Dave Matthews concert. We did a hailstorm concert, um, Evanescence. I, uh, and you know, what I like to do is just kind of get a bunch of friends together and, and everybody picks some different covers. And so there's uh there's a lot of cool stuff up on, uh, the VR sessions.com or our YouTube channel. Um, you can find, uh, a bunch of it and, uh, check some of that stuff out. And, you know, we're just always trying to look for content and try to put it together. It's, it's tough now with the shows, you know, not being around and, uh, we also do it from, I have that uh, venue at Foxborough outside of Gillette stadium called the six string grill and stage. And we do uh, a VIP room. So we'll do it there when artists come in. Uh, a lot of the stuff that we do, there's country stuff. You know, we did low cash out of there. A um, couple other artists, uh, Parmalee did, did one there. So, you know, I try when bands come in, we try to give them the opportunity to, you know, to do one of those and uh, we do giveaways for that and you know put those out as well so it's really just trying to get the content and you know get some cool experience i mean it's what's cool about it is that kind of puts you the way we do it is campfire style around the camera so it's like the every as you turn your head you're kind of surrounded by all the artists and it's like they're playing to you right. you know so it's a lot of fun which you may you know you may have been ahead of the game because I, i'm hearing that's kind of the way things may be going now without touring is a lot of the vr shows where a band would say you know go into a production studio or you know and, and we, we've been talking to some people about yeah. doing some stuff you know what i mean it's just yeah. It, yeah it's really it'd be great if we could you know i mean listen what would be great to be back out on the road and working right. but if, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know i mean short of that i mean it's it's good for us to try and be able to try and capture some of this content and you know put out some of these kind of cool experiences for people yeah, nice. absolutely. Well, yeah. cool, man. So again, uh, yeah, go check it out. Uh, you see the link there, or you can go to the VR sessions.com as well and uh, check out some of those cool videos. Appreciate you joining us, dude. Thank, Thank you. Guys. It good, yeah, it was good catching up. Good seeing you. Absolutely. It's the Mark and Hoogie Show, and thanks to our guest, Mike Mushak, today. The Mark and Hoogie Show. Visit us online at themarkandhoogieshow.com.